God bless you and welcome again to Living Devotions. We are so excited. As you can see, we're in a different setting. We have a different format for this week. We have an awesome series that we want to introduce to you. But before I talk about the series, let me introduce to you our honored guest. I want to say our special guest. We have representing Holy Temple Church, Elder Larry Martin. He is one of our elders at Holy Temple, and we just thank God for his life. And I'm telling you now, this is a man of great integrity who loves God and follows the word of God richly. So a lot of times when I'm teaching, I'm being mindful who's listening. So I have to make sure I stay on my point. And also we have representing the perfecting place, Elder Will Fowler. We thank God. Now, actually, all of us are holy temple ministers. So we praise the Lord for that. And we are coming to you from the sanctuary of the Holy Temple Church. We have a powerful series. Uh, right now, it's slated for two weeks. We'll see how that works out. But uh, we have a powerful series, and the series is titled Foundations and Generations. Now, listen, it's not just going to be us three old men or two old men or one old man here in the middle. It's just not just going to be us men, but we have some other people, other great members who will join us in this great discussion. So listen, sit back for a few moments. And those of you that follow us with our midweek talk back, you know, this is going to lead to some great discussion uh, following uh, this episode today. So right now, take your notes and learn. And tonight, let's talk about it. So we thank God, Elder Martin and uh, Elder Fowler. Thank you both for being a part of this, and I'm excited because it's usually Pastor and Audrey and I steering the ship on living devotions, but uh, listen, you are great men of God, and uh, always count it an honor, if you will, to teach along with the bishop. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Trust me, you meet the requirements, but we're talking about um, generate foundations and generations. We do have an opening scripture. There is a theme scripture to this, and I want to read it uh, to you from the, I believe it's the Amplified Version, and you have to forgive me because I was doing some other work on my phone, uh, but in the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, chapter 1 and verse 4, Ecclesiastes 1 and 4, and I'm reading it from the Amplified Version, which is not too far different from what the King James says, and it reads, one generation goes and another generation comes, but the earth remains forever. One generation goes, another generation comes, but the earth remains forever. And this is something, uh, gentlemen, you don't mind me calling, I know you're both great men of God, but if I say gentlemen, you're not, you're okay with that, aren't you? Yes. This is a relaxed setting, even though we're in a sanctuary, but it's a relaxed setting. Um, this is very important and valuable because even here with the three of us, we're representing three different generations. Not only that, and I know right now it's hard to tell who's the oldest, but uh, it's, it's three different generations right here. Uh, and then in the next episode, we will have some other representation. But I, I find it important that part of the role of the modern day church is to make sure we are connecting to make sure that the gospel is being spread. Everyone is saying, we have to go forth. We have to go far. Spread the gospel, uh, the scripture, until this gospel is preached throughout all the world. But in preaching, we have to make sure we're reaching. Amen. Amen. We have to make sure we're reaching. Because if not, we're, we're just preaching to ourselves. Uh, it, it's good uh, for to preach, to teach the word of God, and people respond by saying amen. But I'm sure you share the same passion with me. But it's one thing for the same people when you preach. And and I'm already saved and I thank God. It's not that I don't learn from you. But there's not so much, I'm trying to say this right, that's going to impact my life outside of what revelation the Lord will give you because I'm already in. I'm already in the fold. When you preach, I'm blessed, but I got it. You know, I got the message. But there are people. See, we can talk to each other. Matter of fact, this is how this whole series got birthed. Mm -hmm. Just from us talking, you know. And we found so much in common in the flow. We said this has to be shared 
with the larger audience. And that's so, I'm doing a lot of talking right now, but you're going to hear from these great men of God, and they're going to share with you uh, just really what the Lord has laid upon their heart. One of the first things we want to talk about, the Bible here says that one generation goes. So there's already a generation that has its time, yes. has its place on the earth. That generation is here, and then that generation passes away. And the Bible says, but another generation comes. But the earth abides, remains forever. God's original, the thing he originally created is still in place. And his, his words to Adam, to Adam, was to uh, have dominion over the earth, replenish the earth, be fruitful and multiply. So there is God's method of of reproduction, of course, of man, of humankind, yeah. that we reproduce. But every gen, listen, we're on the same planet that Abraham was on when he walked yes. the earth. We're on the same planet that Adam and Eve. We like to talk about how they messed up in the garden. Well, we're on the same planet. We occupy the same yes. planet. Yes. This is the same planet where David, and in his lifetime, had to confront a Goliath. Mm -hmm. The same planet where Moses. Uh, performed all of these acts of God, tend to be exact, the 10 plagues in Egypt just to deliver Israel out of bondage. Wow. It's the same planet. Amen. Bring it up further, it's the same planet that a person like Adolf Hitler mm -hmm. Amen. was on. Amen. Uh, the Nazi regime. It's the same planet where we had World War One, World War Two, Korean War, Vietnam War. I mean, we just go on down the list. Mm -hmm. It's the same planet. It's the same planet of your... Kunta of your great grandparents, your grandparents, your parents, yourself, and even your generations after you. It's the same planet. But we find out the experiences of each generation are totally different. Amen. Amen. So do you want to say something there, Elder Martin, and start with that? Well, since since I am the oldest one. <laughs> he he gave it away. I, I was leaving up to the people to try to figure it out. Well, you don't have to figure it out because I am the oldest one. Uh, but I do uh, in my life. I've seen, I've seen a change. I'm 72 years old. I'm not ashamed of that. Wow. But I've seen a change in the generational status. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not. I'm. I, I guess sometimes it looked like I'm hard on the younger generation. Mm. But as I read and as I read the Word of God. And, and different other uh, readings, then I have to come to the understanding there's a gap mm. uh, between generations. There was a gap, a, a, a gap between my mother' mm -hmm. generation and my generation. Sure, sure. Things were done a little bit different in her, in her generation than it is in mine, and that goes the same for the younger generations today. It just at times it frustrated me. Because I see uh, things that I just can't handle. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just seems like it just seems like things are happening uh, just like that, just so fast. Uh, the, uh, back in my day, uh, we we feared death. Mm -hmm. uh, today, it just don't seem like the younger generation wow. fear death. Right. There is a problem there. Mm -hmm. When you don't fear what God has given you. Mm -hmm. What he has given you, he's given you life, and you don't fear that life. You, I mean, you just step up and give it away, or let somebody take it away. Right, right. Uh, when we, when I look at that, I, I, I get kind of uh, disturbed about that because somebody, you know, in generation, the other generation, like you said one generation yeah. comes uh -huh. and it goes, and another generation comes. Right. That means to me somebody's not somebody skipped. Mm. Somebody skipped God's blessings. Wow. Somebody didn't teach their children. Mm -hmm. uh, God had told Moses uh, to teach these words. Teach this yeah. to, your to your children. You know, right. even at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. Is there a dinner table now mm -hmm. between That's the generations? Good. That's good. I, I don't think there's a dinner dinner table wow. to. Talk about these things. Right. Talk about, like you were saying earlier, right. about how was your day? Uh, uh, the, the, what did you do today? Yeah. 
how, what did you do in school today? Mm -hmm. uh, did you pray before you got, uh, before you left the house today? Mm -hmm. See, these are the things that we, we right. was raised yeah. on. Sure. We was raised on, we, like I told you, Bishop, that we didn't have much. But it's one thing my mother kept mm -hmm. study. Mm -hmm. She kept the word of God in us. Okay. She, she, she would read. She would read, and she wasn't a scholar. Mm -hmm. But and and the other thing is that we didn't have no television or radio mm -hmm. where where we lived. That that wasn't no life. You are really dating yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the thing it is, and now now I'm seeing the generation that I've come up. To, right, right. And I'm seeing all these changes where uh, 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 instead of sitting around the table talking to each other. We go to McDonald's and have a fast meal, wow. and, and and the kids do whatever they want. Sure. You know, did you clean your room up this morning? That's one thing. <laughs> That's one thing we had to do. Right, right. They, they, they clean your room up. Right. You know, and then uh, when you get out of school, you do your chores, and then you do your homework. Mm -hmm. I don't even see the kids taking books home anymore. That is true. I don't see the kids taking books. On well, an elder, some of that may be the kids' fault, but I, I even know teachers mm -hmm. who prefer not even to give homework. Exactly. I, when I heard, I, you know, I, I sit in meetings with teachers. When I heard some of my uh, um, fellow teachers uh, say that, I, I, I just sat there with my mouth dropped. Mm -hmm. Because there are days I will be lenient mm -hmm. with homework, but they was like, oh, I don't assign homework like, because I'd rather them do it there in the school, et cetera. Okay, everyone have their different methods. But there's something you just said that I think is very powerful. You said, what is taking away those foundations? And I think we really need to look at that because it's not, you know, when we try to, the generations the three of us represent, uh, it's not to say that we're the only generation that got it right. Right. Exactly. And then because we all have, we're all fathers, grand, well, not, thank God you're not a grandfather. This is the grandfather club over here. But, um, the thing, and then, but the thing is, um, we're not, I'm not, I don't expect my kids to be the way my wife and I, their mother and father were. However, because I do believe in individuality. However, it's just the principles, the principles. I mean, they were strict in our day. They were. Uh, we came up in a ho holy temple, and it was it was definitely holiness. Mm -hmm. And we're not we're not talking about not going against the God's definition yeah. of holiness. Yeah. We're talking about holiness as defined by church. <laughs> you know, so we grew up not going to movies. Mm -hmm. uh, some of us, <laughs> because there were some in our generation who who still. I did not go to movies. To this day, I don't. Uh, didn't go to any of my proms in school because that's the way we were raised some did you know they snuck and went but i i don't have any of that now i don't live in regret of that because the way i was taught holiness mm -hmm. you know i i cannot tell you the latest secular songs unless it's something that's constantly on tv or in the market but i don't have it in my personal collection of cds or however well now even that's old however the young people get it but we know saved, sanctified, filled the Holy Ghost people by profession that do have all of that. Okay, I'm not going to knock the way I was raised because the and, you know even if I have some second thoughts about certain things, which I do, I know, and I want everyone at home to hear. I'm not preaching against going to movies. I'm telling you the way I was raised. So when my children got a certain age and started going to movies. We didn't sit them down, my wife and I, and say, well, you know, that's not the way we came up. Because I know that was kind of, Paul called it legalism. Paul calls it legalism. So we make everything that's not saying glory to God and say it's worldly. Yes. You know, I do say be selective Amen. about what you watch. Because the same movies that we preached against in, in a former day, the same movies we now watch... <laughs> on cable or whatever, it, you know, through the internet or whatever in our home. So so I just want to make that clear because I don't want people to think, now you don't want us to go to movies. That's not what Bishop Pope said. What I did say is don't invite me to a movie and think I'm coming. <laughs> I'll go find dinner when you get finished and then we can talk. You know, we can fellowship after that. But there are uh, foundational things that was good for that day. And it was good because... 
I'm going to just be very transparent. I had to grow up in holiness. Mm -hmm. If not, I would probably be in the church and a stinking mess. And I'm being very transparent because there's too much of a zest for life that I have. I believe in having a good time. I'm not saying I'll be busting hell wide open, but I needed to grow up the way that I did so that I can really cleave to the Lord. Oh, I wish I've done everything right in my life. Sure, I wish I'd done everything right in my life, but there's never been anything in my life to make me want to walk away from God. So on your point, um, those things, I, I think certain things with our modern technology has pulled generations away from foundational things. Certain music, some of the uh, lyrics in the music, some of the dances. I mean, we could go on down the list. So even some of the modern thinking, mindsets, education. Mm -hmm. Because even in schools now, there's certain schools, they're not teaching creation. You know, they're teaching evolution and things like that. So these things are tearing away mm -hmm. at the bricks, the layers of the foundations. We're not coming around the table. And, that, and I'm like you. That's something I grew up on. Mm -hmm. We all ate dinner at the same time. We sat at the table together. No one fixed a plate and sat in another room. We didn't have a TV in the living, in the dining room, rather, and watching TV while you're eating. Mm -hmm. No, you sat around the table. And we t now I grew up in the day with grandparents and all of that. So they came up with, you know, they came, they brought to their family structure their southern heritage. And that was, this is what we do as family. I didn't see nothing wrong with that. Right. I must admit, I can't say I did that with my children. Mm -hmm. I can't. Say, now, when they were little, of course, because they were small. We had to fix their food, fix their plates, make sure they eat. But when those kids got a certain age and their individuality, well, I could retire to another room or eat at a different time. And they didn't want to eat what I cooked. When they were kids, they had to eat what I cooked. <laughs> and we're not going to talk about the menu. <laughs> It was limited, trust me. <laughs> but they survived. Amen. And just to add, just to add more about the gap, um, I, I'm going to take time just to go back to when I was younger. Sometimes being in that mindset of a young person, you think totally different than how your parents was. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times being cool was doing the opposite. Oh, yeah. that's so true. if... Yeah. If my parents did something this way, well, you know what? I'm going to pull my parents' legs up. Mm -hmm. And that generation said, that generation is always looking to distinguish themselves different from another generation's wow. coming. It just seems like it's just naturally to do. Right. So it's, it's so bad now that the trends are coming back around. Mm -hmm. The trends that we did, they're doing again. You know, mm -hmm. when you talk about sagging and stuff like that, well, that was in my generation too. Mm. <laughs> it came back around. When you talk about a lot of these trends that are coming, a generation is like, you know, trying to find something to make themselves distinguish from another generation. And what I love about this talk with a lot of people is uh, when I was younger, I felt as though a lot of older folks would not participate in what we was doing. Mm. You always heard the negative about what you're doing and what you're doing is this, that, and the, and the other. Mm -hmm. But those individuals that came along and said, son, for your future, you know, just spoke to you, not in a way about what you're doing is just so detrimental, mm -hmm. but just put nuggets in your life about your future. Because the way you look today is not going to be the way you look tomorrow. Right, Trust me, right. when you get older, you could be the baddest looking thing on this earth. Right. Trust me, when you start fighting grays and when you're, you're not walking the same from your injuries in basketball, life's going to change when your kids start growing oh, up yeah. and when you start getting more wisdom in your mind. So with that gap, we have to be careful now about um, being quiet mm -hmm. while the world is teaching and preaching to our kids something different. Listen and I that. think that was causing a lot of the gap because let's be honest, um, uh, if you go farther back, the older folks said stuff to you mm -hmm. and you paid attention to it. You might have went against the grain, but a lot of people paid attention to right. what they were saying. They was always actively involved in telling you what, what, to, what not to do. I mean, you've seen them around, but life has, has, you know, the pace has picked up where now, because in my day, 
a lot of the moms didn't have to work as hard as they do now. Right. Uh, I remember in school, everybody pretty much had a dad in their life. Mm. That's different now. My son will tell you now, he's like, it's, it flipped. It's odd for him to say, well, my dad is home. Mm -hmm. So the teaching has changed. But then you have to ask yourself, well, with the gap, who's teaching them? Mm -hmm. If the mom at work 24 hours or eight hours, nine hours a day, mm -hmm. and the kid by themselves, and this was creating a gap. But we don't want people to think, oh, they just coming out. They coming against me. Oh, they uh, they saying certain things. They only want to make me think one way. No, we we want to save you for your future. Well, they <laughs> use that term, don't judge me. Yeah, don't judge me. Yeah, and, and and but anybody, everybody needs structure. I don't mm -hmm. care. You go to a job, your job instantly going to teach you how to do that job better. Right. If you go to the gym, someone is there to teach you how to do what you're doing better. Anywhere you go in, in any place. So even with life, you need someone that's going to come along and teach you how to do things better. Mm -hmm. So, right, that's that's powerful, Elder. I appreciate that. I, I listen. I told you, I'm sitting here between two men, and and I'm saying to myself, why did I even open my mouth? Because these two men of God are very powerful, and I'm telling you, they bless us uh, here at the ministry every time they open the Word of God, and I know they are blessing you as well. Uh, you just said something, Elder Fowler, that was equally as powerful as when uh, Elder Martin mentioned that table. I, for some reason, I just want to go back and do something with that table. I feel the preacher in me want to do something with that table. We got to come back to the table. And and, if, and I'm not even going to start. I'm not going to give out the hints that Jesus, you know, before going to the cross, met with his disciples at the table. I don't, you know, I want to deal with that Solomon when he, when the Queen of Sheba came to visit the kingdom of Israel in Jerusalem, the capital city, that what, what amazed her was Solomon's table and how it was set up and how the attendants were. Don't get me started. Then there was a man named, oh, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought this was Sunday praise. I'm sorry. This living devotions. Then there was David and he told us about a table. In, in the, you know, okay, so in the valley. So anyway, we thank God for that. T then there's a, t Jesus said. <laughs> I told it's this spot. I'm telling you, it's this spot right here. Now, if y'all want to give you, if you don't like what you say, we'll switch. And I'm telling you, that light will come right on. Then Jesus said, all things are ready. <laughs> and the table is spread. So come on to the feast. Oh so we're going to leave that table alone. <laughs> but I just had to get that out. That Amen. table's working. Uh, but Elder Fowler, you mentioned something, and um, I talked so much about the table. But we have to look at the fact that because you're being instructed doesn't mean that an uh, older generation is against you. They're not just saying it for you now, the instruction is for your tomorrow. I can remember one time uh, Bishop Williams, who is my grandmother, one time went up one side of me and down the other. And I was like, and I, I said, but grandma, that's not me. You know, and she just went there. I don't know what the Lord had showed her or what she saw, just that mother wit <laughs> being a grandmother. But she read me like a book. And I'm like, but that's not me. I, I, I listen down the road. Down the road, that conversation came back to my mind. And I was like, you know what? She didn't say that for me that day. She said it because she knew through her wisdom yes. Yes. that there was going to be a day mm -hmm. when you're going to have to face this and go through that. Oh, and, and every, the words came back, and I appreciate it. I didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why is she telling me this? But when the day came, I knew why. Oh, and I'm grateful so we can get... I'll speak as the youngest of the three up here. <laughs> they hold up, make sure no lightning about the strike. But but we just want to make sure that generations understand. The, again, the scripture says, one generation goes, another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. It's not for you to do with your life all or whatever you want to do with it now. Something about your life must make a contribution a deposit to another generation. Elder Fowler, deal with that old mindset. How does that, you know, we could talk rules, mm -hmm. and, and that's when the walls go up. Yeah. You know, the walls go up. But, you know, Jesus said, let this mind be in you. Well, Jesus, the scripture says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And I know you wanted to say something 
about mindset. Yes. Um, for a future generation, we don't. A lot of times, we think uh, we doing a lot of things on our own. And we think that we creating things on our own, but you have to ask your you have to ask yourself this one question. And God said this to Adam and Eve in in the garden after the fall. Who told you that? And that's some of the question we have to ask ourselves. Some of the stuff is not just being created out of the air. And I'm gonna give you a prime example um, with a generation because I got a young son, so I have to deal with it. He'll come back and just you know, Dad, this was going on at school. And I have to step in as a father and say, well, you know, you got to be careful with that, you know. But a mindset is you have to ask yourself, why do we look? Why why do all of us look the same? If if this is a hip hop generation, why we all act the same? Why we all move the same? That means there's one source that's teaching everybody the same thing. Yeah, and good. everybody is connecting and say, well, let's look this way. Ask yourself if you a blood or a crypt. Well, why we all have to look the same? Why we all have to wear blue or red? Why we have to do such and such? New dance, look at the fashions and the styles. So the fashions come out. Everybody is wearing the same fashion. Now ask yourself this question. Are you actually being original to yourself? Mm, that's good. So what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm putting out there, technically you're being manipulated by another source. Mm -hmm. That's that's. It, it look appealing, but it's teaching you to look this way, to act this way, to say um, this, that, and the other. And a lot of people don't understand it. So that's when it becomes a mindset. But technically, it's a mindset that you possess of your own. That's the thing. It's more so it's like what I see, what I see with certain people wearing. Oh, he's he's the hottest artist right now. Um, and I could go down the list. When G-Shocks came out, the watches that the kids was wearing, well, who they get it from? They get, one, one star came on, the, uh, on a talk show one day, sat on a couch, and they saw us G-Shock, and guess what? I was the biggest thing out there. Everybody, everybody had to wear them. If you didn't have them, you didn't fit in. Mm. So this is what we we talking about, a mindset. So now you're, you're, what I'm talking about mindset is, where, who's teaching you? Mm. Where's this information coming from? And then what type of leader is guiding you? Wow. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. What type of leader right. is guiding right. you? Right. Because with social That's media good. now, it's no longer just a preacher. Mm -hmm. It could be someone sitting on the couch, mm -hmm. high as the sky. And they become your preacher. And they become mm -hmm. your preacher. Mm -hmm. And you just you just look at them with that one minute they good, but technically they don't live nothing that they preach about. Mm -hmm. Let's 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 talk about hip hop for a minute. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the bash hip hop. Mm -hmm. But think about it. Look look at the same thing that they're saying. But they could say rob, kill, steal. Um, they could talk about women being on poles, but then you go home to your mother. Do your mother fit that image? Wow. Wow. You get what I'm saying? Right, so, and right. these are the mindset, but we fall into the trends, but are you actually thinking on your own mm -hmm. accord? So that's more so the mindset. The mindset is, it could be very easily influenced and you would think that you're actually thinking of your own. No, you're just agreeing it to, right. to it, but you're not actually really processing things. Wow. That's great. So we're talking about restructuring your mindset because your mindset is based upon what you have experienced. Your mindset is based upon what decisions you have made for yourself according to the things you have already experienced in your life. So through your experiences, not only in your mind, do you keep it stored as a, as a memory, but it also becomes a decision for your lifestyle. So elder, you will stick to your foundational traditions because that's the way you're raised. So as much as in your power, I'm sure you've tried to do the same thing with your kids yes. in our power. <laughs> okay. Because we have one intention. Kids have another no. mind. All right. So we try to do that. And elder Fowler, you raising younger children, your, your son and your daughter, your thing is you're trying to prepare them for future but also let them know you're connected to something that's not just unseen. Your future is uncertain, unknown, and unseen. But your heritage, your foundation, your past is established. Yeah. Your future is only what you make it. Would you agree with that? I agree. It's one thing. It's one other thing that uh, that uh, I was hearing you talk. But uh, I, I was also looking 
that uh, problems arise too when God is not in the house and you're raising children. That's good. When wow. you're raising children, see in my day, children weren't allowed in grown folks' uh, 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 business. Right. They weren't even allowed in the room where grown True. folk were talking. True. So nowadays, if if, you, if God is not in the house, mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about parents is not uh, seeking God themselves, mm -hmm. then uh, and you allow these children to come in into your business and to your conversations. What are they taking from that conversation to the street? And then not only from the street to the school. To the church. Then to the church too. <laughs> Amen. To the church too. Yeah. I, I, and you know, you brought back memories because I can remember the adults in my family talking. I'm sitting right there and they would stop. they like, go in another room. And I'm like, why? This sounds good. I want to know, you know, and we had to be, we had to excuse ourselves because we had no place in grown folks right, business. Right. And that's something uh, Pastor Audrey and I made up in our minds to do with our kids when they were young. Being She wasn't pastoring the church at that time. Our kids were young. She was just a beautiful first lady. I was a struggling pastor. <laughs> Difference. She always had the beauty. I always got stuck with the struggle. I don't know the problem. But the thing is, we decided that at the end of a Sunday, no matter what things ministry-wise that would come up that would just, uh, why do people act the way they do? Why did such and such? I had to have a meeting with this one or that one that we were not going to have those conversations around the kids because being the children of preachers, that can restructure their mindset in the negative about church. And i rather them grow up with a love for God and understand church is just a vehicle of serving God. And this is not God. Mm -hmm. God is that personal knowledge, awareness, and relationship. We heard Pastor Audrey preach that real clear just recently. Um, but we have to understand that we have to watch some, some of the values from that day, Elder Martin, I'm sure you agree with me, still needs to be implemented. There may be things that they did in Elder Martin's day, things in my day, that it wouldn't hurt your kids to follow. Then at the same token, I must admit, I didn't chastise my kids the way I got chastised. <laughs> now, I'm saying that I'm using the word chastise. Those of you that are culturally connected, <clears throat> culturally connected, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so my chastisement could have been extension cords, iron cords, switches, sticks, belt, leather belts with buckles, you know, so shoes. And my grandmother had an aim. Oh, yeah. oh Lord have mercy. Bishop Wills, she went she called on her slides. And and you knew when she reached for that slide, I would take off running. And I by a certain point I, I knew what that meant. So I'm running and I'm weaving. And all she did was get an aim, <laughs> let it fly. And I when I tell you that and I'm in the pulpit and I'm telling you the truth, that shoe found the back of my head every time. <laughs> every time. Now my kids don't have that testimony. They don't have that testimony. However, there are things from our day for the foundation wise that would not hurt them. If, if the parents now applied that. And at the same token, we have to be open to the fact this is not that day. Are you going to say something? And, and, oh, and doing my study, you especially when you're talking about the millennial generation and the generation coming up, when you do your study, you realize that generation raised their kids different. And what I mean by that, they, they use this illustration. You can Google it now. Anybody can pull that information up. And they said one generation um, raised their kids as kids. Yeah. But this generation is raising their kids as friends. Oh, that's a good point. And what that's I mean by point. friends is because of the age and, you know, I won't discipline my, my, my child or, and you see, you know, that's my buddy. And now you can even go to social media and they even have jokes and they be like, you know, they'll say certain things like, I feel as though my, my, my kid is a, is my best friend that pays for nothing. You hear those kind of comments that's on social media now. So just changing the position. From being parent to friend versus being parent right. and you're the child, yeah. that in itself caused, you know, different behavior patterns that we're dealing with now. 
And everything may not be negative, but you will see the difference why one generation walked different than the other. Not saying that one was better than the other, but you will see, like, so what they were saying is, by doing that, it's hard to tell a, a child now, stop. Because the other generation that raised him as a kid was already disciplined from a child to know what stop means. Mm -hmm. But if you raise him as a friend and they get to adults, and now you want to discipline them, it's hard right. to pull them into that. Mm -hmm. And that's what you see a lot's going on now. So now everybody, like, you can't tell nobody nothing now. <laughs> wow. Gentlemen, these are some powerful points that you have shared with our audience today. Was there anything else you wanted to say? Elder, what about you? I just want to add one more thing. Okay. And this is, He's on the roll. And I'm sorry. Because <laughs> my kids are younger. So, <laughs> so I, I deal with it fresh. This okay. is fresh off the press. And this is dealing with one of the things that I'm dealing with now. And it's dealing with my son. About everybody sagging. And this is not in a negative. Will you explain for older gentlemen like us? I, I don't know. What, I, when I think of sagging, I'm thinking about pants. Is that what you're yes. Okay, I didn't, know they, that, you, I didn't know if that was some kind of new term or something. You, you know, they, they show on these pictures, you see, like. I, I'm trying to be relevant in preaching the gospel. <laughs> you see where one generation versus the other. And we stand within the realm of, of the gospel, but we just we just want to share some certain things. And you now, you, they show the picture and say, this is, this is sad. And I had this one conversation with my son that was very interesting. And he was like, well, Dad, you know, um, this is what they're doing. I said, son, I want to teach you that what they're teaching you only can fit in one realm wow. or certain realms. But if you want to be a businessman, you're not going to show up in a business That's meeting with right. your pants That's sagging right. like that. Son, if you're going to be a teacher, you can't come to the classroom with your pants like that. So when we speak in the, uh, when we speak in the people, what I was saying earlier, we're not always just bashing you, but you want someone to give you more than just one realm. So, so if you, if you, most brothers don't understand that if you keep, if you, you think about, I'm going to keep my pants sagging or I'm going to, I got to have my pants sagging. You only can do certain things in life. You only could be a rap artist. You only can be a thug on the street. Look at the options. You only could be someone in prison. Look at the option. But you need someone to come along and say, I'm asking you to pull your pants up or to do a little bit more because now you can fit in more areas mm -hmm. than where you are right that's now. Good. And that's what a generation need to know, that especially for young brothers in my neighborhood, you want someone to come along and offer you more in your future. You may not get it now, but you will understand stand it later. You don't want your bishop to come out on the pulpit with his pants sagging me. You know, oh, that's a trend. Well, this one's not. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, but so they don't understand by doing that and fighting holding on to those things, you're limiting yourself in your future. That is powerful. I think this became the Elder Martin and Elder Fowler show. Amen. But we thank God for both of you gentlemen. And listen, we want you to join the conversation tonight. Uh, at the end of this, you will see the information on your screen. So don't don't uh, uh, leave uh, this channel uh, before you see the the everything so you can join us uh on our zoom conversations called midweek talk back and it's the extension of our bible study and it's where you can maybe you have a perhaps you have a question for something elder martin said or something elder fowler said and you could join that conversation now there's several people there so you can't come on preaching you just have to hit it so other people can also share or allow uh, that community of believers that participate to also engage in the conversation. We enjoy it every Wednesday, am I correct? And it's a blessing. It's a blessing to many people. You do not have to be a member of our churches to be a part of that conversation. But we do thank God for you. And we pray you'll get something out of this. We have another part to this next week. And as we always say on Living Devotions, it is our prayer that you will grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Until the next time, God bless you.